Good evening, Rumblers. Tonight, we're continuing our development journey into no-code mentors. I'm joined by my partner in crime, Quentin Villar from Paris. How's everything Hi. going there, sir? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Today's my birthday, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, I had is. no idea, man. Yeah, <laughs> he was waiting right He now. was waiting until the session for me to just... Yeah. He's like, I'm going to record your... I'm going to see just how excited you really are about my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, man. Thanks, man. Uh, well, I hope I can gift you a new platform today. So we're going we're gonna to try to build this whole thing in the next session, hopefully. Um, we've spent the last few weeks mapping out the process, brainstorming about the elements. Uh, we have a Figma file set up, ready to go. Um, we also have the Webflow side set up, but we're going to be starting from an empty page and just making our way down to help people understand our creative process. But, dude, we got like one week left. we got to launch. Yep. Uh, we're wrapping up the no-code rumble. How do you feel about it? I feel great. Uh, I know everyone's going through hard times, you know, everywhere in the world. Yeah. So, so we try to keep it, you know, going forward uh, with that in mind. Uh, so I, hopefully we'll all be able to, you know, you know, all the rambles will be able to ship the products in, in, the, yeah. in, in the end of the week, uh, the next week. Um, but first, you know, um, I think uh, it's really important to to focus on, on what's important in life. So if Absolutely. some products are uh, just delayed or, you know, for a few days, it doesn't matter as long as everyone keeps safe. This was the very first rumble. It was a complete surprise to all of us, you know, setting this up. Um, and, uh, you know, the fact that we're building all this through the coronavirus and we're fighting all these other external issues and we're still sticking to our path is incredible and, and super yeah. inspiring. It just, there's no excuse for anybody else who ever wants to create a product. It's like, listen, you know, back then we were fighting off the coronavirus. <laughs> we were isolated. <laughs> we still managed to ship a product. So what's your excuse? Yeah. And today we're going to try to simplify the process, demystify the whole building process for this product. Um, it's going to be featuring a front end, which is going to be completely Webflow. We're going to have a CMS, again, Webflow. Uh, we're going to have a integration with Calendly. Um, so that's going to be a simple integration. And I'm going to actually go through the tutorial page on Webflow. I want people to see, like, if you're a developer or designer and you have to learn this for the first time, how would it feel? What would it feel like? You know, like, there's nothing wrong with going through that process. Uh, don't let anything stop you. If you don't know how something works, go search, figure it out. It, the, all these pieces are available to you. For example, with the Calendly integration until recently, that's not something I was really familiar with. I wasn't using that much. Um, and this is going to be something fun for me too. It's like adding it into our CMS and everything. So that's going to be cool. Uh, what we also want to do at some point is collaborate with Chris Spags from Jetboost to set up a search a function within the platform. Um, and down the line, uh, not maybe not during the rumble, but down the line, we'll set up a member stack integration too, uh, depending yeah. on what we want to offer. You know, my philosophy is don't make me sign up unless there's something really valuable that you want me to do with this platform. You know, if it's just going to be to get my email and get my data, it's like, you know, it just feels very sleazy and people can tell, users can tell. So it's really important to uh, make sure that the value proposition is there and it's very clear to the user. Um, but right now, what I really am impressed by, let's dive a little bit into No-Code Mentors for whoever's tuning in for the first time. Uh, No-Code Mentors helps no-coders find amazing mentors in the community and have a direct phone call with them. You know, there's just something special about getting even like 15 minutes with somebody you look up to and just having to having them help you through that process and like a walkthrough as opposed to let me go through watching 100 tutorials and whatever, you know, to just find this answer to this specific problem that I'm having. Or maybe you just need inspiration, you know, you want to connect with an entrepreneur and hear their thoughts on your vision or whatever. So having a platform that can do that is amazing. And I love the pricing structure that you had in mind, which is like no pricing structure. This whole, <laughs> this whole year is going to be free. So I feel like on your birthday, you've decided to give everyone a gift um, and say that, listen, we want to build a great community and great experience for everybody. And if it justifies itself, if the community grows to a level where I need to start monetizing this, then we'll figure out exactly like where to go from there. And there's so many avenues, right? I mean, it's a subscription service. It can be a one-time thing. It could be whatever. You could do a commission system, you know, like you can mm -hmm. have a call and take maybe, you know, something off the top. So there's just many ways to do this. But to say that, you know, I'm not just trying to make money on day one is, is a big step. And I really admire that, man. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think the first thing is to bring value. Um, what's what, what's the value proposition? It's just 
help any maker find uh, the good person to talk to yeah. uh, to go you know next step next level um, and that's the value proposition the main thing is to get that done and afterwards we'll figure out you know how we can monetize that I, th I feel like if the platform is providing value people will pay uh, you know long term I absolutely agree and this is uh, full disclosure one of the platforms I'm most excited to build because the value proposition is so clear and the functionality is so clear and the platform is really straightforward and without further ado I want to go ahead and jump into the Figma page and kind of visualize what we've been talking about till now let's go ahead and close this this is the Figma page that you set up Quentin and I love what you did here by using templates and other elements, components to kind of put together a rough idea of what you're trying to build. That is fantastic. Um, and I think a lot of um, product designers, developers, whatever, they, they should use this approach. Don't try to go and just do everything with scratch in, in, uh, in your own platform and then waste hours and days and months on that. Try to find something that's very similar to what you're trying to build and then either modify that, which is totally fine, or use that as great inspiration for what you're building. So here would be a good example of like, okay, we have a menu. So just the, some of the basics, you know, we have a search, we have whatever. Underneath it, we have the hero block. You know, what's this platform about? I like how you're laying that out for me. You're letting me know, like, you know, Sako, like as the designer developer, this is kind of where I'm going with this. Yeah. And we have like the expertise, like, hey, you know, we offer this many, we have this many mentors, we offer this many lessons or whatever, you know, like this, this masterclass.com approach. I can tell this was a big inspiration for you building this. Um, yeah. uh, that's going to be there. And then immediately it's like, okay, here's like a profile of who these people are. Um, and I like that a lot. Um, followed by like an overall kind of browsing section where you can see like, you know, this is what this person's teaching or whatever. So this gives me a lot to think about already. Um, and then there's a testimonials, a newsletter, the basics basically. Um, and then exactly. I love how you took this and you turned it into this. There we go. Figma is so excited, so I was zooming all the way in. Um, <laughs> so I love how, first of all, visualizing the, pro, uh, the profile like this, and thank you for considering me as a mentor. Um, <laughs> I love how it's just different. That's the best way to put it. Um, it doesn't look, it doesn't just look like a circle, pro like a typical pro profile picture, or you know something typical like this. You know, anyone can put a big square picture, you know? But you're like, what if we manually, you know, did get, get, got some work done, got our hands dirty and try to find something creative. Could you walk me through that, what your thinking process for this? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think um, as this, this platform is uh, an MVP, of course, in the first yes. game, um, we won't have all the features, you know, we don't have a, a big uh, tech team that's, you know, can develop a huge platform that will be the main value proposition, the main thing that you, um, the main asset of, yes. of your product. So we have to find other ways to build that and still give the, the, the value, the, the value, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what I thought is, okay, we're going to do simple things. We're going to, um, let mentors, uh, decide how uh, mentees will, uh, contact them either it's email or book uh, a session through their own Calendly or whatever platform they use. Um, but I think Calendly is the best. Um, uh, book a session through their own Calendly. So what we do is we're just going to embed that through some kind of integration. We'll figure that out. Um, so this is one thing. The other thing is we, we want to stand out of mm. uh, what's already what's already happening in the mentorship platforms or whatever. Yeah. And a, a, a way to do that is first is to be, um, to select only, only very, very good mentors, mm -hmm. only A players. Yeah. Uh, so that, that, with that in mind, it means that you will have, you will provide value for sure with those people. Um, but also it means that you won't have, we won't have, a lot of mentors in a platform we will have maybe 10 20 15 um max uh yeah. in the first 
you know, for the for the first version. Um, so that means you can we can uh, we can spend some time uh, uh, adding value to their profile, uh, show show showing that we have uh, we are building a brand that we're serious. We're not just uh, uh, you know a platform where anyone can set up their profile and be a mentor. So yeah. I think that it's interesting to have uh, to to add something to our to, to the brand to to our branding. Absolutely. Saying okay, we spend some time curating those people. We spend some time speaking to them to know that they are experts in their fields, and we spend some time building them their profile, whether yeah. it's just you know uh, a visual aspect aspect with the pictures, mm -hmm. but also every content that you will find on the uh, on the mentors page. And so that's the real value. We curate hard, and we we spend some time showcasing who those people are, and to to make sure that you will get value out of this. Agreed. And two things I want to touch upon that you brought up. A, when it comes to the MVP, I don't think it's a good idea to build an entire platform end to end before releasing it to the community, because. Often this happens, it's happened in my own career as well, where you know we would spend so much time and resources building something and then figure out maybe it wasn't the right thing, maybe uh, we need to go in a different direction, maybe you know whatever. And it's important to have your core set of features available and make sure that the value of those core features are so high that even if you only release that one feature, everything else would be secondary that you would just be able to focus on that. And I think the Calendly integration is so great for that reason. It's because you're using a third party engine to basically bring to life your main feature, which is people yep. getting on a call with somebody, scheduling a call and paying for it. So that's why, you know, we don't even need to worry too much about like how the payment's gonna be handled. Are we using Stripe or are we using whatever? It's like, well, Calendly's handling that entirely. So from what I understand in Webflow, it's really just an embed. You're just embedding Calendly. That's it. Like, there's nothing special about it. <laughs> I think that's the best way to 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 proceed. Like, uh, it's it's the easiest and the the most powerful way to offer mentees a way to book a session, pay, find I mean, find a mentor, book a session, and pay. That's it. So Deliver. every mentor has to. The other side is uh, every mentor has to have uh, a Calendly account and set that up correctly. Uh, so then they can just provide me uh, with the link of their Calendly yeah. and then we embed that into the platform so mm -hmm. whenever you click the button schedule a call or meet your meet your mentor then yeah. the Calendly pop-up will uh, appear and you just select click pay yeah. that's it and uh, the second point I want to touch upon was having experts that you know, we're not going out trying to find, you know, just open this up to a million people and then you go through a list and you're like, okay, is this like a freelancer.com thing? Is this a Fiverr or whatever? You know, like, hey, I'll charge 15 hours, the other $15 an hour, the other person will charge $16 an hour. You know, it's like, that's not the purpose of this platform. And you know, and shout out to Noah Raskin actually, uh, who's one of the sponsors uh, of the Rumble as well um, and a good friend of mine. Noah built a platform, uh, launched I think last year. It was I think it was in December, uh, called MyFlowMate, which is fantastic, guys. You should definitely go check it out. Uh, my I think it was MyFlowMate.com. It is. Yeah, MyFlowMate.com. Fantastic yeah. platform, and Noah did a great job, uh, essentially building this page for him, where you can uh, you can talk directly to him. You can set up a call, which whatever you need to do, you can book a session, and this is very Webflow. Focus, very Webflow centric, right? Obviously. And when you click on book a session, you can pick your time, you can say like I want 30 minutes or an hour or whichever. And it takes you straight to that Calendly integration. There it is. Boom. Right? So yeah. we actually. That's, a, yeah. that's, that's what we want. Yes. So uh, shout out to Noah. Definitely go check it out, guys. His sessions are fantastic. But what we're trying to build is a mentorship ecosystem filled with all kinds of services for mentors. So the one-on-one -on -one calls or like two-on-one, -on -one, that's something else we talked about as well, Quentin, where you can have like two special mentors who are collaborating with you. And, and uh, uh, like maybe I could take Michael and Chris, you know, both of them and have a call with them. That would be exceptional. Or you could have a classroom that could, you know, hire a mentor and have a session with them, you know, like a one-hour school special education session, for example, right? 
that we have ideas from here to, to Mars, you know, in terms of like how far we can take this. So really the one-on-one -on -one calls is kind of where it started. Um, and we've seen this done really poorly across the industry. Um, and we thought, you know, like there has to be a better way and there has to be a more direct way of doing all this. Um, so we are with, with no code mentors, you know, when before the rumble, Quentin reached out to me and he said, like, Sako, I really want to create a mentorship platform, like not just a mentorship site, but actually uh, something that can bring together mentors from many different backgrounds. You know, like we can start in a particular niche. Uh, in this sense, we could start with the no code community. That's why we call it no code mentors. So it's very specific, right? We don't want to confuse our community yet. Um, um, and from there, once we figure out exactly how this platform needs to work, then we're going to go and expand this to, you know, now we do music, now we do art, now we do film, you know, now we do all these other sectors. And in this way, the platform expands and we offer also a, a lot of tools that just don't exist today to boost the way mentorships happen. Having, for example, the ability to, let's say, subscribe to a mentor and be able to see like uh, uh, other features, maybe like uh, recent posts from this person, um, having like that private feed. Um, I remember there, there, there was this um, Brazilian uh, soccer superstar, football superstar, who had like 33 million something followers on Instagram. And he realized it's like, I'm not making any money from my followers. Like this is just Instagram is making all the money, getting all the views and whatever, right? And he's like, I'm going to create my own website. He did. And he set up a subscription model where it's like $5 or $1 to get access. And he has like 30 freaking million whatever users coming to his website. So he's a millionaire just with that one website now. You know, he doesn't have to play football ever again. You know, like, so it's like, I think being able to take control of your talents and being able to selectively share it with the world in the way that you're talking about, Quentin, and I'm, I'm really inspired with your vision here. Um, I think that that's going to change the game. Um, I know there are other players in the market, you know, like uh, that do just very basic tools that have come out where it's like, just, you know, have a quick call or, uh, you know, just uh, set up a, a quick session or something. But what you're talking about is like, I want it to be more. I want, I want you to start off as almost like an icebreaker with that initial call and then take it way further from there, where it's like you can have a long term relationship with this mentor at that point. And that's why mm -hmm. I think calling it, you know, my mentor as opposed to my peer or my this or my that. It's like, no, you are my, my tutor mentor. or yeah, my, my teacher. Or... Yes. And I knew uh, we had such a long discussion about this as well. It's like, which word do we use? We use tutor, teacher, master? You know, like, what do we do? Like, masterclass.com has such a good direction, right? Shout out to masterclass.com. This has been a big inspiration for both of us, you know, over the years as well. Like, they have such a clear direction of just like, you know what? We're bringing together the biggest names on the planet. That is it. Like, you, at least, I don't know, at least 30 million people need to know your name to be even eligible to get on this website. You know, like, that kind of, um, that kind of power, you know, like, they, when they were first starting out, like, no one believed they could pull it off. I remember when they were first coming out. And they only had like a few people like Hans Zimmer and whatever. That's why like you remember, Quentin, in Facebook when you're scrolling through the feed, it's like masterclass.com, freaking everywhere. Their ads was just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was one of the only ads that me or my friends were watching. <laughs> so, you know, it, it really did its job. Well, on my end, uh, the first time I had discovered uh, Masterclass, I, yeah. I didn't believe it was true. Yeah. I mean, I was like, how like, is it really? possible to have all of these people <laughs> in the same platform? Yeah. You know? But see, they're not competing. That's the beauty of it. It's like, you know, Mars Scorsese is not competing with Natalie Portman. You know, they're, they're completely in their own worlds. And also, I've noticed the visual style of each of these courses. I've had the opportunity to see some of these. And they're completely different. And, they, and I love the visual style, which means, like, you can't just copy that. That's one mm -hmm. thing I want to touch upon as well, which I think could be helpful for the audience. How do you build something that stays true to itself to a point where... Anyone who tries to copy you will just be a bad imitation, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think uh, you have to decide on the vision you have and, and the direction you want to go, you know, and and um, if you have in mind that you from the, from the beginning you want to stand out, you mm -hmm. want to not 
be a competitor in the market, but be the main thing. Yeah. Um, this is a good approach. I mean, masterclass has a good approach. It's not meant. It's not mentoring or, or teach a, te a classic teaching platform. It's mm. the best platform if you want to learn from the best uh, and the very best. You know. Uh, so these are all superstars, and that's that's what makes it amazing. And I think you're taking it to you're you're going to be the masterclass or the mentorship platform. For Hopefully. no, you will be. You will be. <laughs> um, because the vision, you know, that we've been sharing together for the past few weeks has been so clear. And notice how almost everybody you've reached out to has immediately signed up. Yeah, right? um, it's. Uh, I have a no, uh, hundred percent reply rate, uh, hundred percent uh, conversion rate. <laughs> and that's kind of crazy, isn't it? That you know, the no code community is so uh, generous that people are like, yeah, of course, man. Like I know Tom Becker. Shout out to Tom Becker's from. Uh, flowbase.co yep. again amazing platform and amazing assets uh, that we are even using during the no code rumble right components that we're using to build uh, build our, our, our tools um, build our services um, Tom uh, Tom and flowbase are also one of our sponsors and Tom I think you just I just found out today that he's offering free sessions he doesn't even want yep. people to pay for it he's like I'll, I'm happy to hop on for 15 minutes you know like and have that call so that's super kind, man. And I think over time, you know, you're starting from the community and you're growing into superstars. And I think that in the same way that we have like King Bach, uh, King, King Batch, as they say, um, from, you know, like his career, I believe, started on, on uh, what do you call it? Um, what was the name of that? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, it was um, the Twitter... Uh, not Periscope. Who was the other one? Um, Vine. Vine. Jesus, how did I yeah, forget Vine? Yeah. Wow, it was so long ago, apparently. <laughs> yeah. And now TikTok just came out. But, you know, like it just shows that, you know, these people, a lot of these uh, comedians and stuff, they came from those, those platforms. They became super popular from there. So I'm thinking someone might start as a mentor on No Code Mentors and then evolve into a super mentor. Where it's like that person's feedback is so great that you might even sit down with a Hans Zimmer or somebody like that and not get that kind of quality feedback. Because mm -hmm. these people are superstars. You know, like the kind of questions you ask them, you can't necessarily, you know, ask somebody else and vice versa, right? So I think having those levels is something we talk about as well. That in No Code Mentors, you want to have like certain like degrees of, of mentors. Like some mentors are founders. Like these people are founders of companies. You're going to have to pay like maybe $3,000 to have one hour with these people. But, you know, the value that you can get with having a quick call with, let's say, you know, Mark Zuckerberg or somebody or, or Bill Gates or something like, of course, you'd pay a lot for that. Uh, famously, I think, you know, like Tim Cook said, like, if you want to have a one hour, you want to have a lunch with me, it's going to cost like a million dollars. And I think I can't remember who, who, who it was that redeemed that. It was like a CEO of another company or something. And they donated the million dollars to a charity or something, you know, so that's something we can talk about, too, down the line is like. Yeah. What if we could do a donating scheme like the coronavirus is going around right now? What if we enabled people like our mentors to say like, hey, this session, like five of my sessions this month or all my sessions this month, the money is going to be donated to to the coronavirus or something, you know, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's these kind of ideas that elevate the platform and the vision. So without further ado, let's jump straight in now. Yeah. Let's close all this. We don't need any notifications. Let's jump in. So we have this idea of having a side-by-side -side, like video experience here. So we want to be able to visualize. Let me go ahead and put this at the bottom here. There we go. Lovely. Uh, can I make this smaller, actually? No, okay. We'll just keep it like that. Okay, there we go. So here, uh, we want to have like two videos inside. We're going to use like a grid approach, okay? So let's go ahead and put a grid in there. Boom. We are going to center the entire section. Let's call this Hero SEC. Uh, it's good. By the way, yes. uh, I was wondering, uh, I completely understand your approach of having two boxes yeah. with two videos, uh, maybe two faces talking to each other. Yes. That's, that's your idea, right? Mm hmm. That's exactly um, what it is. Wouldn't be another approach to have just one background 
like one video, but the video is uh, uh, some kind of recording of what we have now on the Zoom, you know, but so you only have one video yeah, instead of two. The problem is that when you put this on a mobile view, that video is going to shrink down to something mm -hmm. like this. So what I'm right. thinking is if I record two separate videos, let's say if it was us right now and I took this video, I clipped it in um, Final Cut Pro, and then I would be able to have two separate videos. I could put them side by side. And then right. what would happen is on mobile view, I would just uh, realign the grid to be on top of each other. So you would still have the two videos. Yeah, best, best approach. Yeah. Let's do that. There we go. Have I just earned an achievement? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Quentin is satisfied. <laughs> yeah. 100 coins. You, you, got a verifi you got a verified check mark on your Verified check mark? <laughs> uh, there we go. So let's go ahead. We're not going to waste too much time on the videos and that kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to, I have, I think I have a couple of like basic videos we can just put in for now. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm going to do is, yeah, set up two div blocks. Add a background video in there. So just do a BA background video, boom. And I'm gonna, while we're styling this, I'm gonna upload the video. So let's just pick up something. Let's do like a one and a two. Um, I don't know even what these videos are, so surprise me. Be, be careful. Be careful, <laughs> like. Okay, so we're gonna have a surprise in a second. Uh, now let's go and make this 100% uh, like this, 100%, boom, and let's set this up here. So we have two videos, lovely. Let's go and duplicate this. Uh, we'll set up, uh, okay, these are both being uploaded, okay, okay, okay. Uh, let me go ahead and cancel this one. What's happening? Okay, transcoding, transcoding, yikes, okay. Let's go upload another video here. Let's just have to reload the page. I moved a little fast. <laughs> Catch up to me, Webflow. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's do number one over here. And let's do number two over here. There we go. Okay. This is from another project I was doing. So this is a, this is not a basement. <laughs> it's an interior club little motif. All right. Okay. We have two videos now. And what I was thinking in the middle uh, is we could have a box saying like welcome to no code mentors and it could be with a with a gaussian blur so we could have the frosted glass effect uh that the mac uh that apple popularized mm -hmm. uh, and but just to show you real quick quentin what i was mentioning about the mobile view i'm going to go ahead and just name this left vid and right vid i like using this kind of classing because in the sections here notice how when you're opening it up, you can see the big, like uh, all caps titles. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to, uh, to navigate uh, through those sections when there's like a thousand layers. Um, yep. Yeah, having that capitalization helps. Okay, now we have the two vids. There we go, boom, side by side. This looks like a 3D camera <laughs> kind of approach. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next view and what we can do here is see even on tablet view it's already starting to scrunch mm -hmm. uh, so i'm going to i'm going to just take the grid and just delete this and boom now they're above each other cool done that's great there already responsive and we're back amazing really simple now let's go and call this uh, grid. Let's give it a name so it's easy to remember. So let's call it, uh, let's say, um, hero grid. Yeah, let's just call it hero grid. 
the div blocks, we can just leave them as is. We don't need to name everything. And there we are. Save it again. We want the next element. So what we want to do is have the div block positioned absolute above the grid. So we're going to call this one content wrapper. We are going to set it absolute. Boom. No, no, we don't need to do that. Okay. Set it up so it's like a 10. It's above everything else. And now we're going to make give it a size. Let's make it about, let's say 500. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. With maybe 500 by 500. Maybe, maybe not five. Let's do three, something like that. Mm -hmm. A three with a six. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. And now we're going to make it white. Make it rounded. And let's also make it, give it some opacity. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to go to my Webflow page real quick. We're going to pick up my code, my JavaScript. This is how we achieve this beautiful glass effect. Okay. So, yeah, so just to demonstrate, this is the this is the effect we're going for. It blurs the background beautifully, saturates it, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And also shout out to Noah. I, I picked up this uh, picked up this code um, and um, this effect that I wasn't aware of how to do uh, directly from his platform Code Crumbs. So definitely go check that out. Um, I believe it was called codecrumbs.co, I think. Yeah, there you go. So the platform is going to be coming out soon. It's not, it's not uh, he's still adding in all the content, but it's a, it's a fantastic tool, fantastic service. So like if you're, you know, in Webflow, you're not definitely, you're not, you know, necessarily a coder. He provides all these amazing snippets, like a whole ecosystem of, of uh, JavaScript uh, features and stuff that you can just pick up and put it directly into your uh, directly into your uh, Webflow website. Yeah, super nice. Yeah. Is, is Noah do, doing that? Noah's doing that. That's Code Crumbs is Noah, yes. Amazing. Have to have him on the platform. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so what I what I see uh, in this box in terms of content, mm -hmm. um, I would say, <clears throat> I think it could, it could be cool to have the tagline, mm -hmm. um, not maybe not having the logo. I think I would put the logo in the name of the platform on some kind of menu on top, but just having the you know the tagline and of, of maybe another line of description. Yeah. Uh, and, <clears throat> and I think that that would be it. There we go. You see how clean it is. Super cool. Clean. Super clean pane of pane of glass, and now what we're going to do is we're going to add the content in. So first, let's add um, the name, and we'll also add the logo and stuff, obviously. Let's do this. Done. And let's add some padding on all the sides, so you can just do Option Shift if you're on your Mac. There you go. Equal padding. And now I'm going to add a heading in there. Let's call this No Code Mentors. What font should we go with? Maybe a nice go. motto or maybe a custom font if you want to do that. Up to you. Uh, I, I've, I haven't figured that out yet. So just go, go with then. something random that looks good. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's go with No Code Mentors for now. Like that. Actually, bold is bold does look pretty nice, and we can make it nice and go with the purple, like the branding that we have, so that could look nice. Uh, let's do. 
Wouldn't you want to have only the tagline here and not the name of the platform? Where would you want to put the name? Uh, maybe on top, on, uh, on, a, on some kind of menu section, you know, top left, with the oh, logo okay. and the name. Yeah, that's another question, actually. Are, are we going to be doing a full menu for the website? I think it would be cool to have um, um, like a menu section, uh, you know, with uh, the main CTAs and like maybe the logo on the left side, uh, and then a few options of the page, like a, a how it works page, a directory page, and okay. that's it. Okay, if you want to do a menu, sure. So there was. What do you think? What do you think? No, I agree. And actually, there's a very nice menu component that I have from a from a template that I've, I've used for uh, for a particular project. See that? How soft it is. Yeah. So that could look that could work pretty well. And yeah, I like, sure. I like the search component too. Search is is very cool. Yeah. And and I like the way how, how it is. Um, um, like you have, you don't have you have no background on the menu. Yeah, like it yeah. overlays the video exactly. So I'm thinking that we could have the logo in the middle. I like the M. So shout yeah. out to our M logo, <laughs> like this. And you have the new version, of course, in Asana. So yeah. I'll pick up pick up the new version that you have. It's going. Okay, there we are. Well, let's do put mentors. Here we are. Okay, so logo. Which one did you decide to use in the end? Are these all the same? Um, you can go with uh, maybe the last one, the one that's named um, no, no shadow. Oh, I yeah. think this one has shadow. And this one has no shadow. Good, let's do that. Okay, beautiful. Let's take that, let's put it in. Lovely. Okay. Let's go pick up this element from here. Let's do so. What I do is I have a vast component library I've gathered over the years. So if I know that there's a particular component that I um, that would work perfectly for a particular project, you know, there's really no need to go and reinvent the wheel. Um, mm -hmm. We need to go and use that component correctly because it's already set up. It's fully responsive. You know, don't be an idiot. Like, you know, use the content. You you need to know when to use what. That's the real um, expertise when yeah. it comes to you know uh, using visual developers. Um, I think when it comes to web design, I say this all the time. Web design is dead. Like actual, there are very few people who are actually designing on the web. Like most of it is just interfaces. Uh, chain. This one is like this. This one has a menu on the left. This one has a whatever. You know, and the visual components like the PNGs and the visuals and background videos, that's not important. But the real, like people are, people don't come to a website because of how pretty it is. They come there for the functionality, for, it's a utility, right? So you're looking at the interface first before you're looking at the visuals. So yeah. let's go pick up the nav bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlink it from the symbol. So we can copy this and we can use it. And we're going to put it here. And obviously we're going to style it to you know what we need maybe you know mm -hmm. we can have our own version of this we don't have to like use the exact same thing i i hate doing that mm -hmm. like have your own have your own voice so let's do this we have the search by the way do we even need the word search you know what i mean like it's just mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i think uh you don't you, you might not need it especially on mobile like i definitely don't want to see that word in mobile Something like you have this icon and then you have this. So let's just, yeah, let's just get rid of that. But why is this? Okay, I got you. 
Right, zero, zero. How is the setup? Oh, setup is absolute. 66. Okay, why? Wow, really? Why does this have to be so complicated? Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll get back to this. But, God damn, seriously. Okay, there. It's such a simple element. You're getting way too fast for me to understand what you do. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, I was just, I'm trying to figure out exactly this component because it's like, okay, it's a button and then there's an element inside of it and then there's a, so much weird padding on it. It's just like, wow. Yeah, there was a much simpler way you could have done that. Okay, let's go and add the logo in here in the middle. Lovely. Um, um, we're thinking about <clears throat> the font uh, that you decide to use uh, on every project. Just um, to to know how would you do or or map things mm -hmm. uh, to be able to change uh, the, the the font on every section uh, on the website in a in one click. Yeah, we'll do that. that. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's just uh, creating a style guide and just tying. All right. It's just classing everything correctly, so it's not a problem. Um, I know in my projects, I, I break my own rule from time to time. It's just I, I like <laughs> to have that minute control over every, like, you know, this one, the text is a little like this. Maybe <laughs> it's a long word or phrase or sentence. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I need this font to be slightly smaller or bigger. So it's like I always end up. You know, screwing around with it a little bit. Yeah, so. and tweaking things. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a little bit of a problem for me. I think menu-wise, I don't even want the word menu to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I just I love it like this, like straight, open, you know, to the point. And yeah. What I would do honestly is have take this menu button, and then I would basically just put the same button on the right because this menu button over here is just totally whack. I don't know what happened over there. Okay, there. And I'm just gonna, let's see if I can just duplicate it and let's try to set it up over there, boom. And let's take the nav search button. Okay, 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 one second. When you click here, that is activating search open Okay, so it's not actually an active search button. Okay, sorry, I'm blabbering on a little bit. No, no, I'm uh, following. Okay, good. So what I'm thinking is, okay, 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 I got you. So this is tied in directly to the search bar, which is now visualized like this. Okay, I feel you. We'll get back to this. It's just about positioning that. I think mm -hmm. even now it's just we need to maybe just increase it like this, maybe to like an 80, something like that. Because the way this is set up, uh, there's a bar that's supposed to be there, but it's hidden. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's getting a little weird. So if I just did this, maybe something like that, it's okay. All right, leave it as is. Stop messing around with it. There we go. Now we have our bar, we have our menu, and yep. our no code mentors. Beautiful. Let's see how that looks. Lovely. Great. Boy, this is very trippy. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be less uh, trippy with the actual videos and both people talking to each other. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, let's go add, so like no code mentors, I think we need the name here, definitely need it here. But I'm thinking because people are gonna be talking, probably a white box is not appropriate. I think it probably needs to be a black box. Yeah. Probably needs to be dark. Yeah. If you want to make it really tricky, just go add an invert. <laughs> so wow. This is Beautiful. The, 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 this is the coronavirus filter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't know <own> that. <laughs> Let's change this. Let's call this, uh, okay. Boom. Let's go add a description. 
if or you want to check the uh, Figma project, um, I think uh, on one of the tests I did, you can find uh, if you yeah, zoom out and then go yeah uh, first draft on the first uh, on, on the left and the, and the left one yeah these are the the words or taglines uh, I thought could be good to use sure okay. um. but obviously you know we can iterate on that yeah but that's the last iteration actually. <laughs> for 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 the first version. So my question is: the website is called No Code Mentors, right? No Code Mentors dot com. Mm -hmm. Is dot com or what is it? It is not dot com yet. Fantastic. So if it's already called No Code Mentors dot com, I don't think we need to say No Code Mentors. Yeah. Like I think you're totally right. You already have the M. You have the N in it. You, know, you have so many references to No Code Mentors that I think you just dismissed with that. Yeah, and another tweak would be to add no code mentors right next to the logo uh, on top. Uh, uh, if you know. Yeah, how does masterclass.com actually do it? I think they have their name. Oh, right below it, like that. Yeah, yeah could below, be. or hmm. could be below. It could be uh, on the on the right side yeah. of it. But you know, we'll figure that that out later. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, let's also, by the way, let's set up the color palette real quick while we're here. So I can just pick up the purple. So we can save that. There we go. Okay, this is a white SVG image, so we're going to have to change that later. That's fine. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so that's how they did it. Okay. Now it's centered. We're going to this. Okay. We're going to just make this 32 as well, I think. Like that. There we go. Okay, so description wise, um, let's see. The description you had was talk to the very best no code experts. Um, can I open the reference that we had before? Like this was the first, very first draft of No Code Mentors that we did. And I love sketching, just having like a very basic, like almost like a crayon version of a platform because it just lets me just do like a bird's eye view of the platform. So let's, let's take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did I actually put the rep? Yeah, here it is. I did put the check. No, that's a build. Wait a minute. I think you 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 added it In to. Brainstorm? Yeah. Yeah, this is the problem with Slack. It's just once the content is. Just goes crazy after a while. Here it is. So this is like the very initial kind of like draft that we did, right? So no good mm -hmm. mentors, one line description under it, and then like find your mentor and become a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm thinking, can we can we kind of use that in some way? I'm thinking, talk to the very best no code experts. Hmm. You know what we can do? We can you can put it like that for now, so we can have more exactly. of, of a a, exactly. a visual design approach, and we'll be I believe we'll be able to tweak you know the text and the content to make it super pop. Get mentored by the best no code mentors. Um, I think like using here, you could have a reference to your name. Um, yeah. Um, or like learn from the best. No code mentors. Or. Yeah. Learn from the best. Like that, that could be good like that. I think, you know, because your font is so round, 
we're going to need something round uh, to kind of complement that. And I actually have I have a couple of really interesting fonts you might like. Mm -hmm. Let me open that up real quick while while we're doing this. And underneath it. How about we simplify and say, call, call the best no-code mentors? Or learn from the best no-code mentors? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it's, it's okay. a, this kind of thing that you could uh, think about for hours and, yeah, definitely. And, and, and days and don't know where to go and find, you know, eventually decide to go with the first version you had in mind. So yeah. That's true. You sound like you speak from experience. Yeah. <laughs> well, that happened to me for the logo, for example. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I like how the logo has the M and the N inside of it. It's a nice. Yeah. Little, uh... Yeah, so this is a nice little font. Like even for no code mentors. Very round, very fluid. Some of the letters I don't like that much. It's just like I'm playing with ideas here. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I know. I understand you're just, you know, trying some stuff out. But um, what about this one? This one, this, this, yeah, like this one too. We could go with this one for, for this first version. Yeah, possibly. And there was one more, I believe. There's a few round ones I've been playing around with. Yeah, we can maybe play with this one. Okay. We'll yeah, get this one is good. It. Yeah, we'll get back to it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's go here. What are we doing? Description wise, I think what you wrote here. Let's get mentored. Yeah, I feel like this is kind of repeating itself. Why don't we, yeah. to save time, man, why don't we just do lore mixing for now and, and keep it that way? Because, yeah, you could. Yeah, copywriting and stuff like that is always the, the bane of my existence. Like, <laughs> especially as a perfectionist, it's like, yeah, that can literally take forever. Um, there we go. Nice Monte Monteserrat. Let's uh, end with him. There we go. Something like that. Yep. And below it, we want two buttons. Find a mentor or find your mentor. And become a mentor. Yeah. Great. Now for the coloring wise, how, how do you think we should differ, uh, separate them? Should we go with like um, just a stroke as a button? Or should we go with like a, a full fill inside? I think you could, you could do one. Um, well, one, one cool thing would be maybe do, can you do a, a gradient for the background inside of the button? A gradient inside? Yeah, yeah, of course. So maybe the left one could be uh, a gradient using the same colors as the one we have in the logo. Um, and and the, the the one on the right could be just a, as you said, um, like no background. But you still have the another world for that. Um, it's 
something like that. Yeah, maybe if, uh, can you do it like uh, change the color from left to right instead of top bottom? Cool, something like that. Yeah, so we have two bands like this um, and give it some distance. There we go. And I would say, yeah, keep it as is. I think the height, we should just keep it as is like this and then just increase the padding. There mm -hmm. we go. Nice. Okay. So find your mentor, become a mentor. Uh, the idea I had was maybe this could be a uh, just a stroke. Like this. Yeah. Or, or maybe we have one button with just a stroke. But the stroke is as well a gradient. And and yeah. the other one with a full background. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think about that? I I think maybe when you hover, the gradient should appear inside mm -hmm. of it when you hover. I think yeah. that would be more accurate. How about we do let's make this a twenty, maybe even a maybe a thirty, I'd say. Yeah, nice and big. Mm -hmm. Change the font. Maybe make it more bold. Yeah. Like yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, it is. And now let's add the hover effect. Um, should we should we have it like just going up a little bit, like it moves up just in a hair, something like that? Maybe five pixels up, mm -hmm. and then we can also have it like scaling a little bit, maybe like a point zero one. That's nice. Let's make it a two, I think, because you can't really. There we go. And also the gradient. So let's add the gradient. Let's see how that looks. I think it should look pretty good. Mm -hmm. Let's change the angle. Here we are. There. Let's change it to this. And let's change this. Like this. There we go. Mm, yeah, I'm not too happy with that. We'll get back to this. Mm -hmm. um, I also th I think there should be also maybe a little bit of um, hmm maybe some padding on the inside. I'm thinking. Hmm. I was thinking the stroke could be like on the outside of it, like a white. And then inside of it, it could be whatever. But I think I'm, I'm just going into too much detail right now again. Yeah, yeah. You can do it like, like that. It's pretty cool. Okay. Let's do the stroke. Or let's do transform. Here it is. Nice. Yeah. Nice and clean. 
Let's also do uh, background color. No, not background color. Uh, we have to do gradient. Which one is it? Fog shadow, background color. Oh, huh. okay. Let's try that. Yeah, image and gradient, but where are we changing image gradient from? Margin transform, look on color. Wow. Let's try all properties for a second. Mm -hmm. No, maybe uh, maybe it doesn't apply to gradients. I remember now. Uh, oh, perhaps yeah. you can do gradients. Um, but you can do it like, like that for now. I mean, we could tweak it later, yeah. later on. But I, yeah. I think it's it looks pretty nice. Would you like to maybe change the uh, change the? Um, wait a minute. What if we did? What if I did the opacity and I just said increase the opacity of the inner of the element over there? And we can change this later, it's fine. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So let's see that. I was thinking maybe the line, the stroke, mm -hmm. could change to a white or something when I'm when I'm hovering or something like that. Yeah, maybe. Um but maybe uh, uh, we can, you know, all of these are kind of small details that you want to add in, you know, the last part of the the yeah, of design of course. Uh, building. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's easy to fall into rabbit holes. Um, yeah, I, I love I love the details. It's just like making something. Yeah, I know. Hot. Okay, let's see how that looks. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And this takes us to the home page. This opens up this. Nice. Right now my Okay. Okay, all good. And I really like the Gaussian blur just covering up the page like that. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's nice. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna remove the width as well. Or no actually wait. I'm gonna just add. No, that's okay too. Okay, you could you could add a bit more width, but you know we could. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, again, we could tweak that later on. Sure thing. You fall into this trap of saying, "Well, you know, it's a tiny thing. I'll do it real quick before I move on," and then you end up spending like freaking one hour on that little button. <laughs> it's like it's still not what I had in mind. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but I, I, yeah, overall the experience makes sense to me here. Okay, let's add the next section. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. So in this particular section, let's just first give it a height of like 1000 just so we can see the page. And here, to reference your design, we were thinking of doing find X for your favorite tool. So you want to do like a like a featurette of the of the icons and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, just you know the logos of the main tools, the most famous tools in the no code world. Um, you know, one next to each other, just to just to say, okay, this. If you're looking for something about for help uh, about Webflow, about Zapier, about Glide, this is where you want to be, and we have that. Yeah. So, how many would you feature at this stage, though? Um, and how? Do I we... don't know. Not, not not too much. I'd say. I'd say five or six max. 
Okay, but are we leaving an impression that you're only here for those tools? Like it, it might be too tool centric. Maybe. Um, because I, guess I, I don't think that's a good idea to put like 20 logos. No, I don't think, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering whether we should have logos or we should have topics. So, like, um, you know, like categories of mentors. Mm -hmm. So, like, founders, entrepreneurs, web flow experts. Like, you want to list that or, um, although, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, it's a no code, no code mentors at this stage. So, you know, let's just list the main no code tools. I guess you're right. We could go with that, uh, and uh, I, I like your idea. I think uh, uh, I think that it's a good first version to do uh, with the logos and the, of the tools. But um, it's a good idea also to say at some point that we're not just here to see tutorials of tools, uh, yes. but also you could talk about the vision of your product. You could talk about marketing. You could talk about many stuff, many other stuff. Yeah, but. Okay. But but for the um, maybe for the first version, it's it's, uh, it's a good way to go. I agree. Let's pick up this. Okay, this is just pure black. Okay, so I'm just gonna make the whole page black. That's gonna be the primary color. Mm -hmm. And for the content, or actually, I mean, we could make it like a. Let's go for like this color. Something like that, maybe. Yep. Would you have uh, boxes? Uh, um, yes. Uh, on top of that, that with a different color. You would have. Well, I mean, this is a plain approach you were going with, and I like how. Yeah. Yeah. I like how you decided to have the names be colorful as opposed to the box. Mm -hmm. um, I think having very colorful boxes is going to be a little tough, um, tough to look at overall. Mm -hmm. uh, but you and know, as we already have two videos on top of the page that brings you know colors and stuff going on, uh, it may, might be cool to to have a pretty clean page down below. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even if we take ma you know take masterclass as an example. Um, again, it's pure, it's pure black, and then the content mm -hmm. is just super loud and in your face. Um, so you, it's just visual, very visual content. Mm -hmm. um, but I would do I would do a, kind of like this color, to be honest, like as a as a primary color in the background. I would rather use that. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a try. Yeah. Yeah, when I'm recording and doing these sessions, like my computer can just get really fried while we're doing it. So mm -hmm. sorry for the delays. Um, let's pick this color right here. I believe that's the same color they used. And now let's do. There we go. Yeah. It's a more peaceful color, mm -hmm. and it goes well with the purple and everything. Okay. Yeah, let's go with that. Nice. Now let's uh, add the content. So first, let's add some padding on all sides. Let's make it like a. Let's make it like a hundred. Okay. And are we going to be featuring the tools first? Um, you, you, you could have a little text saying, okay, uh, well, pretty much that. Um, find experts for your every tools or whatever, but just explaining what, what, what are we showing here and yeah. then having a few, um, few logos. Yeah, I think down the line we could 
let's say like so 80 classes 20 lessons 10 minutes uh, I don't think we have that kind of you know information right now so no no it will yeah. be only the first version uh, the first uh, the first section sorry hmm. um, of it and I believe in a few weeks uh, we will have enough content and enough mentors to showcase and to brag about <laughs> sure. on this page sure Let's make this a, yeah, let's give this a padding on both sides. How about we make this section like a white? It just sticks out immediately. Like these are the tools we're offering because the logos are all kinds of colors. So if we put yeah. it on a dark background, I don't think it's going to work too well. What do you think? I don't. I'm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Um, think. I, uh, what I have in mind is. Um, I think uh, maybe having. Not, uh, a, just a, a dark theme. Some kind of dark theme. So we adapt what we want to do to this dark, very dark back background, uh, or same color down uh, from the top to the bottom of the page, um, and and maybe. Add sections like with boxes, like a bit like in in the design I, I have on uh, on Figma. Yeah, for, for example, the the, the Chris bags uh, 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 box. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can make like separate elements mm -hmm. uh, with these kind of boxes that are a little different colored. Um, yeah, I see your point. But I wouldn't I, I wouldn't go with white and then. And then, and then black, and then uh, oh, maybe just, another color. I would really just, stay, stay for the background, for the purpose of the background. Yeah. I would say, you know, good point. Pretty much the same, but we would add uh, add some colors. You know, as you said, on the text and on the um, profile picture of every okay. mentor. Maybe something like that would work. Like a purple ribbon. Like I'm just picturing it like this. It's mm -hmm. like you know these are our mentors kind of thing. Sorry, it's fine. So, what kind of description do we, did you have? Find experts for your favorite tools. Yep. And then underneath it, we're just going to have the tools. Do you have the logos? Uh, you have, if you zoom out uh, from the Figma, um, you should uh, have them one. below, yeah. Um, okay, I need to log in. I could, ex I could uh, export them for you if you want. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and export them real quick. I'll, I'll move on to the next section in the meantime. Yep. Yep. I'm doing this at the same time. Good. So the next section after that is the grid for the, the, the CMS collection, essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to already start the CMS, if that's OK with you. OK, yeah. Um, so let's do, let's set up a What's the best way to approach this? Yeah, there we go. So we need to define uh, 
what our what our collection is going to be, what are our um, mentors, what's their profile essentially. Um, so let's, um, let's see. You have a profile picture. That's going to be the first element. Mm -hmm. We have a we have a uh, name. We have a subtitle. So they're like a founder and CEO or whatever. Yeah, um, I think I can share with you the actually the the form for mentors to uh, send me all their their information. Yeah, that's pretty so expensive. So you can have a look at the different uh, fields. That's pretty expensive. I'm wondering if um, I'm wondering if at this stage we need that much information, that much detail. Mm -hmm. uh, also, another thing is uh, this is. This is a preview, right? So if I say meet, you know, if you click on meet your mentor, it takes you to their profile page, right? Not their profile, but the, like their mentor page, if you will. Yep. And then in the mentor page, you're going to have testimonials and things like that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah. yeah, so I think this would just be kind of a, a short preview. So let's go ahead and set up this collection. Let's call this, let's call this collection. Um, mentor, mentors. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. In this field, we're going to have an image. Let's call this. Let's call this avatar. Or maybe just profile picture. Keep it simple. We're going to have. A uh, plain text name. We already have a name, sorry, never mind. Let's call this um, subtitle. Profile picture, subtitle. Uh, then maybe just um, description mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or bio or bio yeah bio um, something we discussed last time was like having um, having like FAQs and all these kind of details about this mentor and we were thinking of doing it as almost like a pop up so mm -hmm. I'm thinking that maybe in our case what we should do is um, just have it in the separate page. I think the home page should be very clean. You shouldn't have yep. that much detail, you know what I mean? I agree. I agree. Okay. So bio is going to be multiple line. This build is required. Good. Okay. Next we have, yeah, so let's talk about this, man. Uh, There's something we were brainstorming about earlier. I don't like, uh, I don't know if it's a good idea to have like, the tool stack separately listed and then expertise separately listed in separate tags like this. The reason I um, I put it that that way is because I'm kind of putting my shoes in uh, my um, myself in the shoes of of mentees, saying, uh, okay, what use cases they have, and they might want to sort uh, mentors uh, uh, by products uh, by products by tools or by some kind of expertise let's say uh, I'm looking for help with um, uh, design and card or design and webflow and I want to select webflow and design and have one or two or three mentors that can help me with exactly that um, yeah so I see that it has two different filters mm -hmm. uh, that could work together. Um, but that, that is, that is the, the, the reason I did put it visually like that, but that it might, you know, you might have other ways to, to, to visualize that and to design that. Okay. Makes sense. But, I, but I, you know, I, I don't have the perfect uh, answer for now. I'm just thinking like. How many people are going to be experts in bubble and webflow and this and that? You know what I mean? Like, usually it's going to be like one tag, like a webflow expert plus 
UI UX plus, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? True. So that's what I'm just thinking, like having it, it might look weak where it's like, oh, tool stack is only one. Like I only know one thing. Yeah, yeah. You know? So having, and I would honestly put the tags under the name uh, and then the bio. Okay, we could, I, we could I try think, that. I don't know I how, how that looks. Um, it's kind of like, like Sox Pinaciano, let's say Michael Gill, Webflow, Xavier, Automation. Like this is what I'm about, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm thinking we could have Michael Gill. Can you, can you, can you move things around? Like uh, in the Figma project, or I have to log in. I, think... I just have to remember my my details. Uh, I can mm. I can jump in there in a second. One second. Yeah, just have to remember. Oh, <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's try it real quick. Do it. Let's let's tackle Michael's profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you put this here. Fair point. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Can you can you zoom out so I can have a you know an overview? Yeah. Yeah, it works works well too. Yeah, I just think putting it at the bottom is, is a. I feel like this is this this is more of a statement about me and my profile, like this is what I'm about, kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Or what we could do is we could add it. We could add it at the bottom, maybe. Like all at once, could be like this. Mm -hmm. I have this at the top here. What do you prefer? Hard to tell. Um, what do you prefer? Um, <laughs> are we going to are we going to be putting their social links and stuff like this here at all? Any any anything personal? No, not 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 here. I think uh, it might be a good thing to put other stuff and links in their page, and, you know. But I want to keep that first page and first boxes uh, really clean. Yeah, um, I agree. So okay. I think it would be, you know, you just have the uh, picture, name, uh, role, uh, a quick description or a quick bio, and then tags about what they do. And what they can help with. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that as a call to action, like meet your mentor, if that makes sense. But I'm wondering. I kind of feel like when you put it at the bottom, it's more of a call to action. Mm -hmm. When you put it up here, it's 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 kind of like I have to go into the middle of the page to click. Um, you know, like if I took this meet your mentor and I put it right here, it's a little less, um, intuitive. But when mm -hmm. you put it on the edge, it's like, okay, it's on the edge. It's like, I can turn the page or like I can go somewhere. Like it's much easier for me to take my mouse to the edge than it is to go to the center of the page. Then you're always yeah. nervous that I might click on something else accidentally. Mm -hmm. So having it at the bottom probably is going to be the way to go, I think. Let's let's see how. Wouldn't you wouldn't you want to uh, have them a, a little closer to the text? Like 
Well, it's the last row. Oh yeah, and there's another thing. The the tags like it might be two rows of tags too because you don't know how many things this person might be an expert in. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's figure this out. Um, as one line below the text, floating. Let's duplicate this. Yeah, one line underneath it probably is the best way to go. And the meet mm -hmm. your mentor, I would put that I might actually just put that um, here. It just seems more yeah. uniform as opposed to like, you know, this looks a little messy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can always move things around later. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. So looks good have, like that. Yeah, so we have the bio and then we're gonna need uh, the individual tags. So we need to reference the tags into in these uh, these fields here. So let's see. So we create mentors, and now let's create the categories. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think category just needs a name and a color, a color reference. For each um, category? Yeah, each category has to have a color. Yeah. There we go. So let's do maybe 20 categories. How many categories are we going to have? Let's do 10 um, maybe for now. Uh, well, if you include uh, the tools into the category, yeah. Uh, plus actual categories that are more, you know, marketing, workflows, integration, yeah. stuff like that, I'd say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like, like maybe maybe thirty. Okay. Yeah, let's start with the first one. First one is going to be Webflow. Yep, yeah, let's do that. And the color is going to be... You can always adjust the colors later. Yeah, you could just go with random colors for now. And I think the cool thing would be to go pick the exact color of the Webflow logo exactly. and add it to Webflow, you know. Uh, but I'll let's let do that you, later. later. I'll, I'll let you perfect that later. Okay. All you have to do is if just you want, come in here and just uh, change the color setting for each one individually. That's it. Mm -hmm. So no, not much work. Let's do that. Uh, just sent to you uh, on Slack uh, the um, form that I sent to mentors, so you can have a look at the different uh, tools that I already have in the in the categories. Mm -hmm. Okay. If that's easier for you. Yeah. Sure. You added a lot of information there, so uh, let's condense it and figure out what we need to put on the on the profile page. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have. So we have the full name, email, role. Yeah, I like I like the role. That's a very good point. Instead of calling it subtitle, let's just call it role. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you do, man? Keep it simple. Okay. Let's go to settings. 
Oh, let's change this title. Roll. Okay. And what's next? We have the profile picture. Okay. Bio. Languages. Oh yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. What language? You would you want speak? to know if you actually can talk to your mentor if you're French and you don't speak English, for example. Uh, or the other way. The other way around. So how would you list languages? Um, would that I would just. just I think I would just um, to to keep it simple. I would just let people add a text, uh, like. Like I, I would, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, I would, I would do it manually. I wouldn't, you know, add a should list put, of all the different languages possible. Oh, should we just put like circle flags, maybe? Mm, yeah, we could. We could. Uh, I'm just wondering how, like, as an how as this an image, would, how this will look. Because um, maybe you want, you would want, you know, long term, you would want to filter. Um, the mentors yeah. with that. No, definitely. You're definitely going to filter by language. Definitely. Like I speak, you know, say Armenian, I speak English. So, you know, for, a, there are a lot of no code, you know, developers are Armenian and they would really appreciate, you know, having an Armenian mentor. So, mm -hmm. um, that'd be a big deal. Yeah. Um, would language be just one of the tags too? No, I don't think so. Um, I think that, that, I mean, that uh, has to be featured featured in the mentors page, so you have the information, and you can then on the directory filter by language, so you can only show and see um, people that are um, speaking English, for example. I think I figured uh, But uh, I think you know, there's there you will see that there's another thing we could add to that to that box, which is are they offering free? Slash and or uh, and slash or paid sessions. Um, yeah, but it could be nice to have it there. But um, I think I think this is just a just to showcase um, what we do and how good the the mentors are. But mm -hmm. if you really want to get into it and filter and search for mentors and and you know, go inside the product, then you would, you would, you wouldn't want to have all this information on, on the on the first page. Sure. Um, Language-wise, uh, you could maybe just have it here on the side, mm -hmm. like you know that kind of thing. You could also. Okay. Okay. So we'll just have the, over here will just be the basic uh, kind of like reference to that person. It's not going to be their entire, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, free or not free, it's like, you know, this kind of details, it's like go to the full page if you want to see that kind of information. Yeah. Um, but when we say full page, that's another question. Like what does a full page mean? Like if I go to the browse section, I mean, I'm assuming I'm going to still go through the mentors in this fashion, correct? Mm -hmm. So the browse page is going to be basically a longer page filled with these cards. Yeah, uh, and with a great style, I would say. Um, but then the content is going to be smaller. Mm. Like, like, are you? Do you mean like this? Yeah. Yeah, but then your information is going to be even more limited. Um, yes, but you could still you you could like you don't show it on those on those little little cards, but you allow to filter by the data that's in the back. Uh, and when you so when you filter and say, okay, I want only a mentor that speaks uh, French or English, let's say English, and uh, that's uh, uh, an expert who's an expert in Webflow and and design. I just click on the different. Uh, uh, filters, uh, and then I would only see those people, and even though I don't see the information right away on the grid and search uh, directory, when I click on it, then I have the um, mentors page, and on the mentors page I have then all the information. Do they offer free and 
paid sessions, uh, what language they speak, uh, what tools they master, what expertise they have, what about, what what are they, you know, everything. Okay. Um, I'm a little worried about what information we need to get across uh, to get someone excited about that mentor, right? I mean, your platform mm -hmm. is really straightforward. Like we're already pretty much halfway through it. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's like just set up the CMS side. We have the content, we have the sections, but now the, the we it comes down to the real product now where it's like, okay, mm -hmm. what exactly am I going to be, what's going to convince me to use this, uh, to mm -hmm. talk to Michael is a description, a title and a role and maybe some tags enough. Um, I'm assuming most people in the beginning are going to be English speakers anyways. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't think language is going to be a, uh, a big differentiator in a way. Like, um, I'm, I'm huh. not sure. What about the free, what about like the free sessions and the premium sessions? I think if you put up, if you put that here on the homepage, it might actually, uh, people might start only focusing on the free sessions. That could be a big yeah. problem. Like now maybe I know they will. They'll just start looking around for free, free calls. So how about yeah. we, um, um, it, yeah. Um, Okay, no free. We don't need that. Let's go back to your list. We have. Are the, you are you thinking that uh, um, for the directory too, not the only the front page? Uh, I think that the main information you've listed is probably the only information I need to see in the beginning. Mm -hmm. What what cat? What are you mentoring? What's your focus? Right. Um. Um. Let's do. Hmm. Because this is the basically the main thing you're going to be seeing. There's nothing else you're going to be seeing on this page. Like it's just mm -hmm. so we have to make sure the card comes out right. I'm sorry for umming and eyeing a little bit here. Um, no, you're right. You're right. Um, but I, I think I think that's the main thing. You want to know who the person is, what's yeah. its role. Mm -hmm. um, what about, like easy, is the person a CEO or, or, an, or just an expert or, you know, who it is, who is the person, who is the mentor? Yeah. Sessions and is another could, thing. Like sessions is another thing. Um, are we going to be listing the sessions, uh, here? Like the times? Here? I think. I'm not sure. I don't, I, well, I don't think, I don't think so. I think, uh, um, this is really good information. Uh, uh, we want to have that, but uh, I, I, would, I would only display the, this kind of information in detail uh, on the mentors page. Gotcha. Okay. So maybe, I mean, here's the deal. In the beginning, you said you're only going to have like 20, right? Only about 20 of them. So mm -hmm. I would not go with the small grid approach at this stage you have to feature these yep. people prominently. Um, mm -hmm. Best, you know, best case, or let's say worst case, I would make it 50, 50, where it's like 50% boxes, like, yep. you know, two side by side, maybe worst case. And I would make it tall, make it taller. So the content would kind of flow. Um, in mm -hmm. fact, why don't we go, why don't we go see how that would look actually? Um, something like that. And you would have it like that, that approach that could work well too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the panels template for a second. I know that's been an inspiration for many of us in the uh, Rumble because, yep. of, because of the modular approach that they have to their cards. Um, yeah, so like this is a three three uh, three box approach. So if we go back here, let's see. Yeah, having having the profile picture here and then the details underneath it would be actually way better, dude way better. Yeah. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Okay. So I guess we're just going to, you're mm -hmm. saying you're talking about directory page, right? Yeah. 
No, I'm, I'm saying even on the even on the homepage. Oh, if you want to, um, if you want on the homepage, if you want to go with like a featurette kind of approach, having having them slide up like this, uh, that works. You could go with that. Um, and I then, think I would, I would I would go with the what you can see on the screen right now. You know, for the um, I like having cards uh, this way, and you you can just scroll scroll a bit to have yeah. a few examples of who um, these mentors are. Um, okay, and. And then, and then yeah. yeah, and then go, and then you can directly click on on, on a card to see Chris Bag's uh, uh, um, profile, for example, uh, or you could go um, click on another uh, section, another button that uh, brings you to the whole di directory. Did you get me? Mm. I'm just thinking. I think having two views is a good thing. So it doesn't look monotone, like the same boxes everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's good, but it's the same content. Yeah, it's just, uh, it uh, like, Having it displayed that way for the home page is, is pretty um, relevant because you know you only have three featured mentors. It's just mm -hmm. these are just examples. But when you when you want to search for even when you have twenty only twenty mentors and you want to search for the right one, uh, then you want to, to you don't want to scroll through mm -hmm. twenty cards like that. Definitely. So maybe having two, you know, dividing the time uh, of searching by having two. Uh, cards uh, next to each other uh, that would yeah. work well, I agree. but that's only for for the for the purpose of making the search easier. Okay, so in that case, we'll have these are like the top three. Let's say, are you going to have any more than three, or maybe just stick to three? I would say just three, just to just you know to keep it simple. Agreed. Um, for the other sections, though, I mean, we're still going to need to figure out where the languages are going to go. Uh, maybe that can be something verbal, just like, uh, <clears throat> like we can just say, like the, the you know Michael speaks, and then you know English or whatever. Mm -hmm. that, that could literally but, be uh, just text. It doesn't have to be um, separate tags or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think it, it could be good to have text, but uh, I'm thinking uh, it could be also good to not display that kind of information in these cards, uh, in this, in these cards. You mm -hmm. have it um, mm -hmm. in the background, so when you're in the, the when I say in the background, in the data. Uh, yes, yes. So when you want to uh, filter in the directory, you could select English, and then only English people uh, will display. Um, uh, and if you want to visualize that to see if Michael Gills speak French or English, you can just click to his to, 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 to into the card, go to his page, and then in his profile page you will have all the information. Is he is he does he speak French or English? Does he offers uh, does he offer free or paid sessions and stuff like that? Sure. Huh. Okay, so from what I'm get, what I'm getting here is that basically, until you've clicked on Michael, it doesn't really matter if he speaks English or Chinese. Mm -hmm. Before you click on Sako, it doesn't matter um, what his hourly rates are, or whatever. If you're not interested in that person's bio, right? If you don't, if you're yeah. not interested in that person's, you know, whatever. Why are you seeing their Twitter? you know, their tweets or whatever, or any of that stuff. And speaking yeah. of tweets, what if we did like a Twitter integration too on their page where it's like you can actually see their latest tweets, uh, their social status, this kind of thing. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, sure. Okay. So yeah, that, that's that's but, a meaningful profile page. Yeah. Okay. I think I think we will have the possibility to add, to add all the information uh, that a mentees would want to have in each of the 
mentors page. Yeah. Um, but for for the for the purpose of this main page, first landing page, where you just want to know what we do, who are these people, um, how um, how good or how you know how good they are in their fields. Yeah. Um, just knowing the name, the role, and a description with a few tags is good. I agree. Uh, here we're going to have to reference. We have to add a reference to. So again, now we have to decide what is the, what are, how many um, tags are we going to have? Uh, I, I would say I would say thirty, but I believe we can add some. No, I mean I mean per user, how many tags are we allowing oh, them? All right. Um, uh, can, can you can you decide? Uh, uh, not by, can you set that up not by uh, a number of, of uh, feature, but uh, um, a size it would take on the page? Um, you know what I mean? I don't think so. So like here, I could pick one tag, right? So if I want to, in the CMS, if you want me to be able to add multiple tags, like you can choose multiple mm -hmm. tags, I have to add those. You don't have to pick all of them, mm -hmm. but for each person, you're going to have to pick a few. So I'll, so what I'm thinking is the way I'll set it up for you to make it easier is okay, reference. Actually, can we use uh, not can we use multiple references? Let's see how that exactly works. Oh, perfect. Yes, that's what we're looking for. Cool. We don't need one. Yeah, that's what I remember. Like some of these integrations, like, you know, depending on the type of project you're working on, um, you're not always going to be using these features. So, well, every once in a while, you have to kind of refresh your memory. It's like, okay, so mm -hmm. like, how exactly did multi-reference work? You know, like that kind of thing. And these features also get updated and you know expand uh, like every few months. So like, you're always mm -hmm. gonna you're always learning when you're using these tools, no matter how many years you're using it. So that's great. Um, so let's do tag or tags. Let's say. Okay, wonderful. Now, let's go back here. So we have Webflow, Bubble. Just give me, a, give me those others real quick because I, I, I want to have, I want to have them listed. Uh, Zapier. Zapier, yep. Yeah. Um, Airtable. Let's say. Uh, Adalo, Glide, Airtable, Was the other one? Keep going. Um, Adalo, A D A L O. Yeah. Parabola, right? That was another one. Parabola two. Um, member stack, member yes, space. Of course. Parabola. Member stack was a capital S, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, there we go. You want a few more? 
Uh, I would want to focus on the experiences now. The tools make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, of course, we've got JetBoost, of course. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I think those are the primaries. Mm -hmm. Squarespace. We'll add the other ones. You know, we'll add the, the other ones later. Yeah. We'll add the other amazing no code tools like Squarespace and WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> we said no code. <laughs> okay. So let's do uh, UI UX. Yeah. It, then you have integration or integrations, um, automation, workflows, design. Yeah, well, you need to, yeah, like for example, design is a pretty vague, so it needs to be more specific. So like, yeah, it could be web design, for example, web design. Yeah. Like web design and product design are completely different things. Yeah. So we need to have that distinction. Product design. Yeah, let's, let's go with product design. Then you can go with um, what automations. We, yeah, what if we call, or, what if we actually had like tags like web designer as opposed to web design? Um, it could it could work, but I I'm not sure it will work for every type of uh, category, uh, every type of expertise. Like um, if um, if someone is specialized in the CMS, for example, yeah, no, it'll you, be, it'll be hard to everyone. say you're a CMS or <laughs> um, web design. Okay, web design, product design. Uh, what else do we have? Um, oh yeah. Um, Entrepreneurship. Yeah. Should we say investment? Or um, venture capital, maybe? We could, we could. Um, even though uh, I think it will be interesting to, to add more specific things like uh, automations, for example. Automation. Um, automation. Mm -hmm. CMS, I mean, I mean, I was saying, like, who would mention CMS, like, as a, as a field of expertise, like, what exactly are you an expert in, like, the CMS is pretty straightforward experience, like, do you need to be an expert in CMSs? No, it's not, it's not like, um, this is more of a, okay, uh, I know, let's say, let's say, I know how to use the basic features of Webflow, um, but I'm stuck with the CMS feature uh, that I really need to use. And I would want to talk to someone that masters uh, this kind of feature. So mm -hmm. I think it would be interesting for mentees to know who to reach out to. Fair enough, so CMS. And well, this way, I mean, so in the end, people are going to have about six or seven tags, honestly, the way I see it. Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't want to turn into a freaking zoo where it's like, no. you, know, you just have like 15 tags, you know, it's like, you got to specialize in something, you know? Um, like when I say I'm a web flow expert, I'm like, okay, I'm a web flow expert. It includes the CMS, it includes the tools, services. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I would not personally say like just CMS, like I'm a CMS expert specifically. That's like saying like interactions expert. Mm -hmm. Um, You're right. I like prototyping is definitely something that we need to have. Prototyping. Three more. What else should we have? Um, uh, marketing. Marketing, absolutely. Marketing, yes, of course. Um, vision, maybe, like, a, you know, product or business vision. Graphic design. Maybe like illustration. 
Like I know Pablo Stanley, for example, is a is a brilliant illustrator. Mm -hmm. So like illustration maybe should be a separate category. Let's go with that. Yeah. I think I'll figure out, you know, um, all the different categories that we need for the for mm -hmm. different profiles of mentors we have. Yeah. Um, and I'll add them to the TMS along the way. And like copywriting, for example. Like some people are just brilliant when it comes to copywriting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, that's a lot of categories already. And then you need to yeah. customize them with their own color and everything. So work on that. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking like now coming here, we have, uh, do we want to maybe go with the stroke approach? Like a different stroke for each tag as opposed to a full color for each tag? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could, we could, um, could, you know, think we, th these are little things that you want to try uh, and see yeah. um, when you see the full page uh, what looks the best, you know? Yeah. So let's select mentors and let's go from there. Okay, good. Let's, let's fireside through this. Uh, we got one second. Okay, we got to create some. By the way, Zanko, I, I will soon have to take off. No worries. For this session. No worries. So let's go with 20 since you said we're going to have 20 mentors. There we go. Boom. Okay. So just to have the, I want you to have this reference during the week, the weekend, so you can mm -hmm. kind of picture it. So we can do this element and then you can go. Let's do fantastic. Let's go add some distance. Maybe even a hundred, man. What do you think? Like nice breathing room for each one? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And let's give it a nice rounded edge. There we go. And now inside it, we're going to have a grid. Let's first of all add some padding. There we go. Voila. And now looking at your design, we have one circle, and then we have, so one, two, and you want to have the role at the top, founder and CEO, mm -hmm. Chris Spags, this approach. Yeah, I like, I like that, uh, that, that approach. So, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've seen that in, in, um, in a few websites and a few examples. I, f okay. I found that interesting. Okay, so we'll have one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's break it into four parts. Let's do it. There we go. Now we can have is one div over here, one large one. And we're going to yeah. center it, have the picture inside of it. Mm -hmm. There. And we're going to, uh, let's add a picture inside. Mm 
There we go. Get image from mentors. Let's do it. So this is just, yeah, this is just super round. We need to round this. We're not rounded at all, actually. What we need to do is upload the ones you had. Mm -hmm. So let's do place. Let's go to my desktop. Here are the pictures we, you gave me. Let's pick, let's start with Chris. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Which one is this? Let's keep that in mind. So this is coming. Let's add a text field real quick too. Okay. Name. There it is. Okay, so this is the very. Let's go search for that one. I want to just have one example and see if that works. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's go add Chris again. There we go. Save it. I think I uploaded it and then I didn't save it. Okay. There we go. Let's go ahead and make it smaller. Nice. Yeah, it looks very clean. Lovely. Now we have the names, all the rest. So I can just white, let's say. And I can just move, I can get rid of these gaps as well. And let's just move it to the left. There we go. But that's the basic layout. Mm -hmm. um, and now what we can do is we could even just have like one div entirely and just put the elements inside, but we don't have to use the grid approach. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to see how, if you wanted to have the full granular control, this grid approach might work. But I know you have to go. So what we'll do yeah. is let me, what we were able to do today is cover, let's go view this real quick. We were able to number one, brainstorm the direction, figure out um, where some of these elements, how they're gonna be laid out. We create the homepage already to cover, which is great. I really, I really enjoy this approach. Uh, we mm -hmm. have the search. We have the menu, and we'll customize this next time, not a problem. Uh, and when we go down, we're gonna have the logos, which you sent me already, right? Yeah. You sent me, oh, okay, perfect, I'll put those in. And then we cool. have the, the experts coming down, uh, followed by tie, this same data is gonna be tied to a separate profile section. So I think we can have one more session um, just for that, for the separate profile section, and then the Zapier, and then I think we're good to go. Yeah, perfect. Fantastic. Dude, this is awesome. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much for your time, Sako. Likewise, man. I appreciate you. Uh, this was a nice session. Really like, nice. Definitely. And I think during the week, what, what do you think, like Monday or Tuesday, something like that, for next call? Mm, yep, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll, I'll shoot you a message so so we can... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll line the times. Um, yeah, yeah. I know you're not going to be going out anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> You're so, right about that. Stay safe, dude. I appreciate you. Enjoy your weekend. Peace. Bye. Thanks a lot.